Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here, and welcome to another campaign for XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. We've got a lot of mods. They're all in the description uh, if you follow the link down there. Uh, a couple of quick highlights. There's a ton of new enemy mods. It's going to make the campaign a lot more difficult. We've given some of the uh, avatar buffs. We've got new mission types. We've got different maps. We've got a ton of cosmetics. Uh, we're going to be running with some... Um, kind of second wave options that are going to make the game a lot more difficult. We're doing hidden potential. We've got new classes. We've got a whole different um, psionics class who level up just like regular soldiers instead of, you know, us waiting till the end of the campaign and then only using them for the last mission. So that'll be really fun. Uh, if you guys want to submit a soldier, you can submit it any time throughout the campaign. The earlier the better, the higher the chance you have to get in. There's links in the description for how to do that. Uh, all of it's handled through Discord, but if you uh, read through description, you can figure out the best ways to get your character uh, into the game. And I'll be uploading those uh, regularly throughout the, um, throughout the campaign. So, without further ado, let's get going. We're going to start a new game. We're going on Legend. We're going to do against my better judgment. This is going to make the game so very, very difficult. But we're going to make dark events permanent. We could, we could, this whole campaign could be over, like, midway through. It might happen. Uh, we're going to do not created equal as well. So that um, all of your stats for soldiers are uh, randomized. But it's balanced around, like, a point pool. You can read about that if you look at the description. But it's a way to give some more variety in the, um, in the uh, soldier kind of evolution, which is super cool. So, uh, we're gonna do those. Now, uh, some people expressed concern in the last campaign that I it did say Iron Man in the title, um, but I don't run Iron Man with mods because as you guys know, a lot of crazy things can happen. And if something like ruins a playthrough in the middle because the mod like glitches or there's something that we need to like reload a save, that's absolutely essential. Uh, but I am doing what would be called like an Honest Man playthrough, which is, I don't do any reloads. If I die, I die. If things go poorly, they go poorly. I only do the missions once, that kind of thing. Um, so I won't put Iron Man in the title, just so that there's no confusion there. Uh, start without Iron Man. We're going to do the integrated DLC this time. We won't enable Lost and Abandoned. Um, one of the cool things is that there's now this um, kind of Golden Path rework mod that we've got in here. Basically what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that um, there's different enemy types in all like the primary missions. It's not going to be the stock pods that you'd always run into. So that'll be kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what kind of variety we run into. So without further ado, we're going to play the intro because it's the best. Here we go. Accessing the feed now. We're in. But I don't know for how long. You seeing this? Way too much security, even for Advent. That's no ordinary gene therapy clinic. They were telling the truth. Or they're leading us into a trap. A really obvious trap. We'd need an army to march in there right now. I've got a better idea. Outrider, this is central. Go. Mistakes are bound to happen. It wasn't our fault. Please! There's no need for any of this. I will do what you ask of me. I just need additional time. Did you say something? You're one of those. You must understand. I had no choice. Outrider. Report. So, you do exist. 
exist. Outrider to Avenger, I have visual confirmation. Are you sure? Reapers are always sure. I'll take your word for it. Cover your tracks and get the hell out of there. They can't know we were here. Yet. Understood. Now the real war begins. I love that. That re that do over is so much better than the original. Excitement continues to build as city centers across the globe prepare for the 20th anniversary of Unification Day. Thousands line up at the site of the Great Accord, celebrating the formation of the Advent Coalition. In keeping with their promise to humanity, 12 new gene therapy clinics will be opening in select cities by the end of the new year. Despite the attempted attack by fringe elements, operations at the new facility in Paris thankfully remain unaffected. In response to the unprovoked intrusion on the eve of our most beloved celebration, the speaker reaches out to us. A small number of dissidents again repeat the mistakes of the old world. Striking as we celebrate a benevolent savior who time and again offers only friendship and compassion. Yet these trivial actions could never break the bond between humanity and the elders. Peacekeeping forces have already made several preemptive arrests of known collaborators. Advent again assures all citizens that today's celebrations will continue as planned. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna meet the first four. This is the best for me. <laughs> I just, just want to see, first of all, how cool everybody looks. Second of all, I start to form this opinion of them like right away. Are they gonna be good? Are they gonna be bad? Are they gonna live? Are they gonna die? Chances are, this campaign, a lot of them are gonna die. Sick knee pads. Looks like we got a skirmisher. I'm okay with this. We're moving in to take out a high profile target that will get plenty of people's attention, especially Advent. Move to lock down the area and eliminate any security forces nearby. Okay, Novgorod. Let's do this. Menace 1 5. We have a fix on the target. Okay. To place the X4 charges at the designated Looks like position. a lot of testosterone so far. Concealment. That's okay. That's okay. First of all, Robert Link Stanley. Basic little Contra soldier. Five health. Remember, uh, not created equal. We're going to have some people with more or less health. 63 AM on this guy. Um, Lars Ice Visser. Very cool. Four health, 74 AM. We've got uh, Fedman Grief Kassad looking pretty cool. Uh, 70 aim, 5 health. And then Stealth Pathfinder Mason. Oh, that looks cool too. 65 aim, 5 health. Alright guys, welcome to the team. Welcome to the team, you all look great. 
Now, we do have some potential high ground. Let's focus on surviving this mission. Moving. Hopefully with uh, minimal designated position. health impacts. And by health impacts, I mean if you guys die, we're going to have problems. We really need Gate Crasher to go well. Moving there. And if it doesn't, well, it Heading doesn't. Out. All right. Let's take a peek here. Let's get the high ground. So far, so good. We're gonna have to get in that fountain and blow this place up. Okay, we found a group. The one with the officer. That's not bad if we can isolate. Oh, but we looks like we got. Yikes. Okay. They're disciplined and well equipped. Oh, we found Oh no. We actually Although found them all. Some resemblance to the sectoids first encountered during the invasion. All right. Well, actually the structure now includes human DNA. They are stronger than ever with an even greater psionic potential. It looks like that should be breaking concealment. Getting it done. There's pros and cons here. The the con is that obviously they're all so close together that we we could trigger them all, and that could be a huge problem. Uh, the pro is that, well, we know where they are, so. Okay, they're moving. If these guys would just, you know, just back that way a little bit would be great. How is this not breaking concealment? It has to be. That's so bizarre. I'm gonna see if I can get eyes on these guys. Actual targets. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. The problem is this group. Headed in now. So I'm gonna tuck in here. I mean, this this has got to break. Maybe because of the um, the gotcha peak thing. That might be what's causing that, but either way, I'm not, I don't want to take that risk. With this, okay, so this is an example we should be able to get to. Because this last tile should be safe. Move into designated coordinates. Where you can like, yeah, 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 cool. Okay, good. That's, that's working correctly. Might be visually a bit weird. But that's working correctly. Okay, yes, go. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. Plus, we still have eyes on this group. So what I'll do here is... We'll pull back Grief. I think we'll probably grenade this group. Are we hitting all three, though? I think so, yeah. We're hitting all three. If we get lucky, we kill one. The others will overwatch. Come on, and then hopefully get the rest, you know? Alright, this is how the campaign's beginning. Grief. Let her rip. Okay, a little bit unlucky. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Everything's fine. Right, boys? We got the high ground. Can't possibly miss. There's one. Oh, there's two. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Okay. That's less good. But it could be worse. Suspected flanking maneuver. Suspected flanking maneuver is right. However, I have a suspected flanking maneuver of my own. To that position. Grief, come on down. Grief only has five health. Uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of health variation, unfortunately. 95 on the trooper, 75 on the officer would be absolutely massive if we can get it. I feel pretty good. Oh, yep, that's big. That's big. Okay. Now he's in the open for one of these guys to clean him up. I'll pull Pathfinder back a tad. 
Uh, I may have wanted to actually do it the other way. Yeah, I probably should have, because then Pathfinder might have been able to come down and flank. Either way. Oh, what's your aim down here? 65 on that guy? Kind of have the same deal. We do have 100% here, though. Versus 89. We have the 100% there, but then... Actually, your shot here is pretty good, too. Alright, let's take this. God damn it, Pathfinder. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Alright, fine. No, it's all good. It's totally fine. What more could I want, you know? I wonder... You know what, let's grab the full cover down here. With Link. You have got to be kidding me. Alright, alright, I see how this is going to be. No, I, I see how it's going to be. Um... I could drop in here for the full cover. I could pull back this way for the high ground. And yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to take that. I need to this kill needs to be secured. 100%. Okay, so this guy's aim 74. That's okay. You're the marksman. Let's go. Okay. That's a little bit messy, guys. Not the ideal start. Couple overwatches. This guy's... This guy's living the dangerous life. I admire that. Man, look at Lars's aim, though. 74. That's so good. So I think... I think he's actually got a pretty good shot down here. Into the overwatch guy. Whereas here... Let's give her. All right. From the elder stock. 62 even is pretty good. Never mind. I did <laughs> what is that? Three? I mean, that one's forgivable. That one's forgivable, but... Am I flanked here? Man, I feel like... I'm actually not sure. We do have other ways that we can deal with this, if we wanted. You know what, I'm gonna play it safe. So far, even though we've missed those high percentage shots, it's, it's gone okay for us. This might be a 100% now with, uh, with ice. Oh, he doesn't see him. If I come down here, it surely is. Поехали! 100. Let's move already. 94. Let's take the 94. All right, there we go. Now we've got this guy overwatching in case that other group comes up. So far, so good. So far, so good. All right, let's get some reloads in. Let's do this. Ready to go. I might regret this, not having all these overwatches available. Come get some. Reinitializing weapon. Ah, I'm gonna regret it! It's okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, so I already know what motivates this guy. What motivates him is giving praise to the other guys, because as soon as we started saying this guy, Lars Ice Visser is our marksman. This guy's like, I'll show you who's a marksman. Okay, but this, this dude's... This guy's in a rough spot. Moving to position. Are you kidding me? Target's still up. Link! Oh my god. And we're gonna have an interesting little relationship, aren't we, buddy? Alright, Lars. Da, from downtown. 
95, baby. Let's go. Okay, guys, this is going great so far. I don't want to jinx. I'd really like to get this stuff. You know what? Let's go for it. I'm not going to take the shot to full cover, really. Repeater and agility. Nice. Remember the repeater? We have the same thing that we did last campaign where it uh, adds to crit damage. And then let's pull back here. I don't know if I want to get into like a... He's not seen. I think what I'll do is I'll drop here, actually. I don't want to get into a shootout where I'm in half, he's in full. Alright, he's just gonna be chill. Alright. Okay. I'm gonna have Justice up in one more turn. We could take these low percentages. I might actually... I don't have the grenade up here. It's 25%. I mean, it can happen. If we take our 25s... We take enough of them. <laughs> Mathematically, we will eventually get. I don't have any safe way to, to get to this guy with my great aim. It's a problem. 18, I don't like, but we do get two shots. All right. All right, this is our chance. He's made a big mistake. We have 55 on Justice. More importantly. I think what I'm going to do is... Hmm. I'm going to bring Stanley back order. here. Let's move already. Pathfinder comes up. Hey, maybe we get the four, but if we don't, we got it. Oh, boys. Area is secure. We're not picking up any inbound contacts. Right. Scanners are clear. Menace one five. We have a limited window to act before advent responds. We need to get those charges planted on the double. Okay, this is this is the dream start. Honestly, this is great. Spotting those all the all of those groups right at the beginning actually worked out pretty nice. Missing those, uh, those high percentage shots had me a bit concerned, but... Guys, no scratches, even. Which is huge, because we can take everybody out again on the next one. one five. Rendezvous at the extraction point. Let's go back to base, let's meet the team. Status confirmed. Squad is clear. Detonating <laughs> oh, I love that. I love when we have, like, the flawless gatekeeper. That is not the norm. That is not the norm. Alright, we'll take it. Got a gas grenade. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, uh, we will get photos for these guys. We can we can start by taking them in here. But, um... There's a mod that actually makes the photos better, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll get into that in a sec. I may have actually needed to do it in mission, um, but that's okay. We can do it on the next one. I would like to assure the citizens of Advent that our peacekeepers will stop at nothing to prevent further attacks by criminal elements such as the one that occurred today. The elders have total faith in our ability to overcome any and Grief did pretty good. Look at our shot percentage, 33. I mean, to be fair, we kind of tanked that at the end with all the, uh, like, with the 25s and the 220s. 
That's okay. An impressive performance, Commander. Our troop skills are improving with every deployment. Just like it sounds, oh, yes. sharpshooters engage enemy targets with pinpoint accuracy from That is a sharpshooter. That's They're sick. Also trained in pistol marksmanship for the occasional close encounter. Oh, that's so good. That's ice, right? Yeah, that's so good for us. Oh, that's so good. All right. Perfect. Okay, what about you, Pathfinder? What are you all about? Ranger serves as our primary reconnaissance unit. I like it. Capable of moving independently in concealment while engaging enemies at close range. I like it. Very good. Now remember, we have two new classes that we're doing. We're doing a Psy class, which um, levels up completely just like soldiers. So you don't like just put them in the thing and let them train forever. And we also have the uh, infantry class. So it'd be cool to get one of those, but... You see how that one had the uh, the picture? Boom. Oh! There we go, we got the side class. This is so good. Okay, so, uh, soul fire. Great, and stasis, great. This is awesome. Now, I don't want to show all of these ones. I'm going to let these be a surprise, but I want to be able to see, obviously, the, the class-specific ones for planning purposes. Um, but this guy, he levels up just like other soldiers, so he has to get kills to get experience, but the cool thing is, is now we have psionics, like, early, and we don't just play with them at the last mission, you know? So this will be really fun. Robert Link Stanley. See, these photos are what should be showing up on the side. Um, so I'll check into that later. And then our skirmisher. Sick. Great start, you guys. Great start. Alrighty. Impressive, isn't it? Capable of generating immense I think power. we've probably all seen these cutscenes like a million times, so I'm gonna pass. Um... Now you'll notice that there are additional slots in a lot of our buildings where you can staff engineers and those will give us various benefits and we'll just kind of explore those as we can. Uh, but that's one of the mods. We're going to go modular weapons as we did get that repeater. I do find that area of and then over here, let's do... I'm always of two minds about this. It's either guerrilla tactics or resistance training center, right? Or, sorry, Resistance Ring. I think... I think because the plan is, after a couple of missions, we're gonna, we're gonna up the squad size with the mod, and then we're gonna go from 5 to 7, uh, leveling up through the um, Guerrilla Tactics School. I think that we'll go Resistance Ring first, with that in mind. Nice thing is, this could give us other cool benefits, too, when we do the Covert Ops missions and stuff, so... Um, let's do the resistance ring. Tigan seems to have a habit of Commander. Good to see you on your feet again. Thank you. Welcome to the bridge, the nerve center of our operation. The aliens have our entire world in their grip. Advent controls everything. Government, communications, industry, not to mention the military. And it's on us to take it all back. Resources and time are tight, Commander. It'll be up to you to decide how to best use both. The ship is yours. Thank you for relinquishing control. Appreciate that. Nice! Rookies right off the bat. I'll take it. I'll take it. Avenger plotting new course. Once we get these rookies, uh, we'll go and we'll meet everybody in the, uh, in the barracks as well. You know them as they were. The soldiers There's our skirmisher advent. introduction. Now they are free to choose. If you stay your course, Commander, they will stand with you until the end. Now there is one bug with some cosmetics. The puppets of advent, slaves to the elders. Vulture modular construction. Now, Interesting. We, are free. we might have some uh broken are driven to fight the elders with a rage that cannot be stopped by our own hands. We will destroy all that the elders value. I think we have some additional mods that give us uh, new covert actions and stuff as well. So that'll be interesting to see um, what kind of stuff we run into. Um, there's a there's a issue with one of the mods where I think the people on Gatecrasher might have some of their cosmetics mixed up. So we'll load those from the character pool and then uh, they should be okay. Our research was Boom. a success, 
command. Oh, good timing. Okay, so mag weapons, weapon upgrades available. Yep. Hybrid materials inspired. That's not bad. Saves us a little bit of time. Uses up some trooper corpses, but we're going to find hundreds of those. So let's do it. I will send word as soon as we have something of note. All right, John Doe, Heidi Hansen, Chris Broadway. Welcome. Chris Broadway, Heidi Hansen, John Doe. Sick. Supplies. We'll definitely do that. But let's go into, uh, let's go in here now. So, Stealth Pathfinder Mason. Uh, let's take a look at your loadout here. First, the, the first thing I will try to do is Australian Ozcam in black, because when we, re when we load from the character pool, that's gonna get, uh, We've uh, been changed. picking up some weird transmissions lately. It sounds a little like German, but it's hard to tell. So this will make sure that he f he for sure has everything the same, and I think his was pretty good. But some of them might get weird. So, but if we just take note of what these are, then we should be totally fine, and we can do a quick swap like that. Cool. Uh, Stealth Pathfinder Mason, nice to meet you. Let's see what you're all about. As a Pathfinder, uh, here. As a Pathfinder, Stealth acts as XCOM's advanced operative and reconnaissance operative. His role includes marking drop zones, landing pads. Before he converted to XCOM, he led the 12th Advent pathfinders on hunting down escaped resistance members and locating key resistance havens. Once he saw what Advent have done with the intel he collected for them, he started working as a spy for resistance, giving them giving them information on key locations and intel which could turn the tide of the uprising. Once he heard the commander was safely returned to XCOM, Stealth also joined up with XCOM on the Avenger. Pathfinders lead the way. Oh, I'm actually wrong. His name is not Stealth. It's Self. Sealth or something. That's my bad. I was reading it wrong. Sealth. Mason. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. Okay, let me know. But welcome to the team, mate. Very cool. All right, next up, Robert Link Stanley. Robert Link Stanley. Let's, uh, let's load you from the pool, first of all. Weapon is none and black. Easy. Easy. Okay, cool, looking good. So far, unaffected. All right. Robert Link Stanley. After the aliens arrived, Robert Stanley continued to teach in his small private school. He was determined to change the future by challenging the minds of his students to think critically. As the years went by, Robert grew concerned as more and more students had family members suddenly disappear. After one spring break, two of his students didn't return. Mr. Stanley decided he needed to do more than just teach his students. He spent the following year training before and after school, as well as between classes. The next spring, he heard the rumors of XCOM re-establishing itself. So he turned in his notice. As he left his graduation ceremony, he set out to find a resistance cell that could connect him to XCOM. He wanted to find the answers to why his students went missing. Cool. I like that. I like that. Teacher. That's not a common one. Very cool. Welcome to the team, Robert Link Stanley. Psyop. Your psionic soldier. Maybe I shouldn't call him a psyop. It's psionic, you know? Gotta get used to that. Okay, next. <laughs> I can already tell that Ice is going to do some serious damage. Look at his aim already. 84. That's super cool. All right. Um, customize. Check the weapon. Tundra Dark Blue. Tundra Dark Blue. Okay. That's all good. Nice. All right. Uh, Tundra. We have, like... There we go. Good looking soldier, too. I like this. Ah, oh, this is so cool, man. I'm so pumped that we're doing this again. Okay. So, uh, Ice. Welcome to the team. Let's see if you are, uh... Oh, yeah. Starting out as a sniper. Okay, so this was, this was your class that you picked. That's cool. Let's see. 
Starting out as a sniper from the Spetsnaz, Visser found himself contacted by a strange organization known only to him by their name XCOM. Wanting to find out more about them and getting tired of the politics of his own unit, he agreed to join them and found himself on the forefront of battle against a growing alien threat. Visser's skills as a sniper became legendary throughout XCOM, the general public, and even throughout the invading alien forces. Soldiers across the world revered the man for his excellent marksmanship. Aliens on the battlefield would regularly ignore all other targets in favor of taking one last shot at Visser. None succeeded. Th uh, though cold and calculative on the battlefield, back at base, XCOM knew him as not only one of their best snipers, but as also a great friend and true ally. Visser grew to see XCOM as his family and fought ferociously to ensure its survival. Being one of the last ones to leave their HQ when it invaded... Oh, sorry, to ensure its survival, being one of the last ones to leave their HQ when it was invaded. He stayed behind long enough to ensure that Central, Shen, and Valen all escaped. He tried to stay long enough to secure the commander, but was eventually forced to retreat after a prolonged sniper duel. Having been separated from what remained of XCOM and hearing of Advent's total control over the world, Visser disappeared into the wilderness of Russia. There he was content to spend the rest of his days in isolation, refusing to bend to the will of the invaders and determined to help to keep the memory of XCOM alive. It wasn't until two decades had passed that Visser's isolation was finally broken when XCOM recruiters knocked on his front door, looking to recruit an old XCOM veteran that lived in the wilderness that locals in a nearby village had mentioned in passing. Upon realizing that the veteran in question was Lars Visser, the, recruits, the recruiters found themselves stunned in silence as many considered the man to be long dead. When the recruiters finally found their voices, they spoke shakily, Visser, sir, we represent the revived XCOM project, and we they were promptly silenced by Visser, who in one motion of his hand silenced them both, stared at them with a large smile on his face. I'm in. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I love that. How bad would that have been if not created equally? Made your aim just terrible, though. Oh, I'd be so devastated. That worked out nice. All right. Uh, Fedman Grief Kassad. Let's do this one. So digital and like gray 58. Digital 58. All right. They all seem to be pretty close to their to the ones that they built, so uh, I don't I'm not noticing any big changes, which is great. Okay, grief. Kassad was the leader of a crack commando unit created in the early days of Advent. They specialized in infiltration tactics and were mainly used in search and destroy missions against the remnants of human resistance that survived after the initial invasions of Earth. Because they were one of the earliest generations of soldiers created by the aliens for Advent, Kassad and his squad mates were given considerably more free will and independent thinking uh, than later generations. This made them much more effective as most of the time they were operating deep behind enemy lines where the alien psionic network was often weak. After years of fighting together and watching out for each other, the members of Kassad's unit began to see each other as the family they never had. However, because of the dangerous nature of their work, attrition inevitably, led to inevitably began to take its toll, and one by one the original members were killed. Replacements were furnished to make up for the losses, but as they were drawn from later generations of soldiers, none of them had the individuality and life of the original group. Eventually, the family was reduced to Kassad and a soldier he had considered his brother for as long as he could remember, Zan Tal. Interesting. Unfortunately, the loss of so many of his closest companions proved to be too much for Zan, and he broke down completely. Once the Advent authorities found out about his loss of combat effectiveness, Zan disappeared without a trace. The grief that Kassad felt at the loss of his last friend in the world was so strong that it broke him free of the psionic network. Once he recovered from the shock, he resolved to make Finding Jean his life's mission. He knew of only one group that could help him in this goal, the Skirmishers. Sick! That's so good. Alright, Mandy, Wombat, Jay. I don't think I have to load these guys. Everybody seems to be good. Um, but I'm sure you guys will let me know. Okay. Mandy was a young girl when the aliens first attacked Earth. Her family was able to get out of the major cities before the alien terror campaign began and fled from Australia to the wilderness of New Guinea. There, Mandy and her family joined a few other refugees and took up a survivalist mindset, living off the jungle until it was safe to return home. 
Several years later, their, settle their small settlement was discovered by an advent patrol, and in their attempt to keep themselves hidden, the settlers fought back only to be wiped out by additional reinforcements. Told to run and hide during the battle by her parents, Mandy was the only person to escape. She spent the next several years living in the jungle by herself, pilfering off both advent patrols and innocent explorers alike when possible. Then a resistance patrol looking for supplies and hearing of an abandoned settlement in the area went looking for it. Thinking it was just another chance to get supplies, Mandy attempted to ambush the patrol, but she was captured in the attempt. Not knowing of all that was going on in the outside world, Mandy was initially distrustful of the resistance members as they told her about Advent and the world they were trying to save. Realizing they were fighting against the same people who had killed everyone she had known, Mandy decided to leave with them and join the resistance and civilization. Super cool. I like the little touches of like being in the jungle and you've got like the jungle print and like that's super cool. The eye patch, interesting. Interesting. I'm 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 intrigued. Mandy Wombat. Kevin Vanarian Van Heron. Hello. What do you got on the side there? That's cool. Alright. Uh, he was but a little boy when it all happened. Burning debris rained down from the night sky. Kevin and his little sister were playing outside in the backyard when the air the man alarm would be proud sounded. Of what managed to do here. What uh, you've managed to do with this ship? I just wish he had lived long enough to see us fight back. To know that it wasn't all for nothing. Trust me. He knows. If there was one thing your father always kept in mind, it was his faith in humanity. He knew we could win. On our own terms. Um... When the alarm sounded, sorry. The back door flew open and their father ran outside. In a hurry, he picked up the little girl and tried to grab Kevin by the hand, but Kevin tripped over one of the toys and came to lay face down in the grass. When he looked up in a daze, his father shouted at him that he had to stand up and run to safety, still carrying his little sister. In the following moment, the night sky lit up for a split second, and after that, everything went dark. When Kevin finally awoke, he was in the arms of an XCOM soldier. The soldier wouldn't tell him anything about his family, but in the background, Kevin could see his house ablaze. With his mother inside the house and his father and sister so close to it that they couldn't have survived the blast, he now knew he was alone. In the years to come, Kevin trained with XCOM and helped in the fight against the aliens and Advent. One day, his patrol encountered a small Advent force and decided to engage them. This decision led to the death of the entire XCOM patrol except for Kevin. Although Kevin had been hit by the grenade of an Advent Heavy, he survived the slaughter of his patrol. I'm not liking the luck that Kevin seems to not have on his side. Back at the Avenger, Kevin's wounds were treated but still left their marks. Together, Shen and Tygen fabricated a prosthesis to replace his lost arm. With the ability to hold some sort of psionic energy and maybe the potential to empower this energy. Interesting. I'm not seeing a prosthetic, but uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay, so Dutch DPM and 112. Dutch DPM 112. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he changed a bit there. Oh, here! Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So I should probably just do that for everybody. I should just do it for everybody, because it seems like sometimes they load in correctly, sometimes they don't. But if we load from the pool, it seems to be correct. That's confirmation of that. Very neat. Very neat. Let's go back here and just double check, just to be sure. The weapon is uh, purple and wild. Yeah, so she's fine. There we go. All right, Captain Cap Ducke Calhoun. Welcome to the squad. Welcome to the squad. First of all, let's get your weapon sorted out. So, no weapon pattern and color 94. Fair enough. Totally fine. <laughs> It'll probably be only that one that's affected. Oh well. Was it 112? Oh, I think I screwed that up. I don't think that was her color. I can fix it later if you, if you know what it is. Okay. Uh, in this world, filled with the horrors that is known as Advent, Captain Calhoun is more than just a pretty face. She's the tough ass... She's the tough... Ass nails. Okay. Tough ass nails. <laughs> Take charge leader who fights for humanity's freedom. 
When she's not fighting off Advent, she's training her troops for the next attack wave. This unrelenting commander is driven by a personal vendetta and will stop at nothing to protect humanity from the alien threat. Calhoun was engaged to her fiancé, Dr. Brad Scott. They were happy and deeply in love, even to the point where they got a dog and named it Dynamite Gal. However, on their wedding day, her fiancé was brutally murdered in front of her by an Advent mutant. Calhoun, or Calhoun, is it Calhoun or Calhoun? I think it's Calhoun. Has since been traumatized by the scene and has become a bit of a spiteful woman. Her leadership and tough side, and tough side often comes to show whenever she briefs for a mission. She always says stuff like, fear is a four-letter word, ladies. If you want to pee-pee in your big boy slack, keep it to yourself. It's make, it's make your mama proud time, and we are all humanity's last hope. Our mission, destroy all advent. Boom. Very cool. All right. Cap Ducky, welcome. Welcome. Uh, Lucas Specter Benz. That's quite the getup. Okay, so Hex and... 62. 62 Hex. I oh, can't forget that, right? Oh, yeah. See, he changed a little bit there. Look at... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Sixty-two hex. All right. Uh, birthday, January 9th, birthplace Stuttgart. Lucas was always determined to serve his country. When he tried to join the military, he was rejected due to medical concerns. After that, Lucas was left completely aimless. Until the invasion, Lucas wanted to prove himself and the rest of the world that he had what it takes to be a defender of Earth. But good intentions alone don't make a good soldier. Lucas tried to free a group of prisoners from an alien convoy. Only half the people escaped. The rest were captured, including Lucas. For four years, the aliens did horrific experiments on him to observe the limits of the human body. That included the infusion of psionic energy. His body reacted violently, the psionics causing him to expend, expel a massive amount of energy. When Lucas woke up, he was lying in a massive glowing crater. Around him, nothing but rubble and dead bodies, both alien and human. Lucas was ready to end it all, since in his head he was responsible for more bad than good. But before he could pull the trigger, he stumbled upon a refugee camp. There, he learned of the New World Order and Advent, and the fate of his hometown, Stuttgart, which is now overrun by zombie-like creatures. With everything and everyone he knew lost, Lucas found a new form of clarity um, within himself. He knew that he could not allow this regime to continue. With his unwavering will and growing sonic abilities, he brought the fight to Advent. After his first encounters, Lucas teamed up with other fighters. Quickly, he developed quite a reputation fighting for humanity. A few years later, he was contacted by XCOM and was offered to join. Finally, Lucas was ready to show the aliens that humanity is still a force to be reckoned with. Very cool. I like that. So, a psionic soldier. Alright. I like that. Cool stories. You guys have really outdone yourselves. Oh, look at this. Whoa, what? This is a weird... Uh, I'm just going to fix this because it, it looks funny. Robin Sir Tang. Neat. Let's check your weapon. Hex 56. Oh, you changed quite a bit. Hello. Hello. Alright, Hex 56. I wonder if it's because when people build using maybe more advanced, uh armor types, it, like, always wants to revert you back to, like, the Kevlar base. Maybe that's what's causing it, but either way. Robin Sir Tang. Oh, did I not fix this? Okay. Um, Robin Tang was, and Lil, oh, Robin Tang was Lily Shen's childhood friend in Taiwan, but they lost contact to each other ever since Lily flew to California with her father at a young age. After finishing university in USA, Robin went back and founded an underground intelligence network in Asia, Taiwan Resistance Agency, TRA. He, profit, he profited for, from intercepting encrypted communications between governments and mega corporations, then sell those precious information in black market to the highest bidder. When the alien first invaded Earth, he terminated all the ongoing TRA missions and recalled all the elite agents. Then he moved the TRA HQ onto a remote island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Since that day, TRA has been staying in the shadow gathering information, staying in the shadow, gathering information about or against the aliens while recruit, rescuing and training refugees into their agents. 
After 20 years of perfect covert... Of perfect... Covert op, maybe? One of the TRA agent got pinged while trying to decrypt an advent communication. Aliens swarmed and wiped out almost all the refugee camps on the island after dropping bomb on the TRA HQ. Rob was the only survivor in the command center. Standing on the ashes of 20 years of hard work and hearing the dying screams of his people, Robin finally realized that he stead stands no chance against fighting against alien superior technology on his own. With a bit of hope, he gathered every single remaining TRA agent and joined XCOM to make his last stand against Advent and their alien masters. Very cool. Good looking soldier too. Notice a lot of, like, eyepieces this go-around. Alright, I like that. Elise Sapphire Frey. Cool. So, no weapon pattern. Um, 94. 94, none. I like that look. I like, the, like, the army-style looks, you know? All right, let's meet you. Elise is a German citizen. Well, she's a bit more than that, even if she won't admit it. Her family is well known and wealthy, and Elise herself is pretty famous in and out of Germany due to her acting and modeling career. Thanks to her family's connections, she and the rest of her family survived the initial invasion. Quite comfortably, too. Under Advent's rule, they lived mostly the same as they did before. However, Elise decided she wanted to join XCOM and fight Advent. Her reasons remain mostly unknown. Could be that she wanted more excitement in her life. Or it could just be that she doesn't trust Advent. Either way, she has skills XCOM could use. She's not a fighter, but, they can be, but that can be improved upon. Her real skills shine in the fact that she's bilingual, able to speak both German or English and German. Couple that with her confidence and natural charisma, she can help with PR out in the field or back at the adventure. Maybe once we get a foothold against Advent, she'll open up to the idea of using her connections against them. Elise has potential, not only to be a good soldier, but to give XCOM a good public image. Propaganda is a powerful tool, Commander. That's sick. That's such a cool BIOS. I've never seen something like that. Well done, Elise Sapphire Frey. Great job. Very cool. 65 aim, not bad. 6 health, pretty good. Great job. Welcome to the team. Felix Cerberus Banks. Oh, look at you. All right. I feel like yours might change pretty significantly. Hearts and 12. 12 of hearts. Oh, actually, no. Okay. 12 of hearts. Not usually a fan of, like, the hearts, but, uh... I feel like... I feel like you're probably gonna have a good reason for it. <laughs> Let's check it out. Felix Cerberus. Used to be a pretty boring guy. He lived alone with his cats and watched telemarketing channels all day. Then the aliens came and put down all his cats and the telemarketer too. He got a bit weird after that. He stopped giving anyone his real name out of paranoia, but when somebody once called him... <laughs> but when someone called him Dr. Eggman once, he decided he had to make a change. He decided on Cerberus, the three-headed dog that guards the gates of hell. Because he's the last thing somebody sees before they die. Needless to say... He was the last thing the Eggman guy saw. That's so good. I love stories like that. Oh, those last two. That's so good. Very creative, you guys. Awesome. Havoc has not forgotten. Hello. All right. What do you got going on here? Vietnamese Starburst. Vietnamese Starburst 188. Vietnamese Starburst 188. Oh yeah, you changed. <laughs> cool. Vietnamese Starburst 188. Boom. Oh, that's sick. Some of the stuff you guys come up with. Like, look at that. That's really good. All right. Country of origin, Canada, obviously. Date of birth, 2009. Wow. Uh, Havoc wasn't around the first alien invasion as he was born shortly after. So there you go. His mother became pregnant with him shortly after the aliens first hit his town. Mr. Forgotten, Havoc's father, 
stayed behind to defend it from the alien invaders, but alas, their efforts failed. Uh, if that was all Havoc could have been, fine. He wouldn't even be here fighting for XCOM. But only recently, he has learned that his father is still out there. Not as his former self, not as the proud soldier that he once was. But one of the many, one of the lost. Oh, cool. Havoc has learned that the aliens aren't what they say they are, but yet he feels a slight amount of sympathy for them. Something must have driven them, them here. They must have a reason for all this harm. With two reasons to fight, he's willing to take up any weapon for XCOM, be it a blade or sniper rifle. Despite not being one of XCOM's most devout members, he is willing to get the task done no matter the cost. Awesome. Welcome, welcome to the team, Havoc. Very cool. Well done. Illyrian Praetorian Dark Sky. Man, you guys... Are... Oh, this is the... Uh, this got replaced for sure. With the uh, old survivor. So let's figure out your weapon. German Flecktarn. 87. German Flecktarn. 87. Cool. German Flecktarn. Cool, that should fix your bio. Oh, it doesn't? It should. I don't like that. I thought it should fix that. Let's check, try it one more time. There we go. There we go. Now we got it. That's weird how it does that sometimes. It's also weird how it determines, like, which ones it's going to import correctly and which ones it's not. All right. Country of origin, Austin, Texas. Date of birth, December 16, 2006. Eralin. Oh, that's how you're saying that? Eralin? Oh, boy. I'm going to probably stick with Praetorian. Because to me, I read that as Ere Erilian. Either way. Eralin had a colorful past. From a close encounter with an Advent death squad to a botched treatment of Advent and near death experiences, she has seen a lot. Her brother, Pagan, <laughs> you guys remember Dark Sky? Told her about the resistance. Okay, cool. This is uh, okay. Tying it all together. Her brother, Pagan, told her about the resistance and left when he was a teenager. Sadly, he perished in the first few skirmishes uh, his group had, and heir never found out. Born out of Austin, Texas, Eralin, tried to understand her place in the world by training with a small resistance pocket. During a routine patrol, Advent descended upon them and wiped them out, save for her. As an officer was about to execute her, a Reaper saved her and killed the remaining soldiers. While she trained, the Reapers gave her the nickname Praetorian because of her selflessness towards others. Air almost became one of them, but was kicked out for a growing illness that plagued her body and deemed too sick to fight. That's so sick. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> she took at risk and went to an Advent clinic, feeling of worry that she would die before knowing her brother's fate. Things took a turn for the worse. During one of the treatments, something went wrong and left her paralyzed and unable to breathe on her own. Advent dumped her out of the clinic with nothing but a mask and an oxygen tank and a deformed eye. Oh, man. While she was cured of her illness, she was not going to survive long despite her freedom. Luckily, XCOM happened to be in the area and picked her up, and with some borrowed equipment, got her walking and breathing on her own again. To this day, she has not stopped fighting. Oh, you guys. You guys have outdone yourselves. This is blowing my mind. Some of these bios are so good. John Doe. <laughs> John 3D Doe. All right, buddy. What do you got for me? Okay, so Digital 7. Digital 7. All right. Samesies. Okay. Young John Doe was a troubled and misunderstood teenager who lived in the slums of the UK. These are the guy. He's the first batch, or the first of the guys that we just recruited from the, uh, uh, from the scan. He used to live with his parents until they couldn't understand why he had to commit Grand Theft Auto every month and steal cars for literally no reason. Because of this, he was kicked out of his home and thrust into the open world with no one to provide him. A couple months... I can't... It's full. A couple months after, he contracted retrograde amnesia after suffering a concussive blow to the head in a strange incident involving a stolen double-decker bus, multiple police officers, and a collision... 
directly into a police station. With no memories of his former self, he took on the name de plume of John Doe. With no one sharing his love for the hijacking and spectacular crashing of vehicles, <laughs> he felt he was truly alone until he later, until he found refuge in the world of movies. Oh, cool. Being able to live the life from the perspective of another person was really intriguing to young John, kindling his love for the film industry. He no longer felt so alone, realizing that everyone in the theater shared a common interest with him. Films. However, one fateful day during the 3D premiere of Fast and the Furious 40, basically Transformers at this point, and completely drowning out that film. <laughs> in shock that someone could be so rude, he's... Oh, what happened here? One fateful day... Oh, he heard a loud rumbling sound shaking up the whole town and completely drowning out the film. In shock that someone could be so rude, he swiftly exited his seat to investigate the cause of the disruption. To his surprise, he found aliens swarming the movie theater while making very harsh and metallic screeches. Unable to bear the pain of missing the best part of his movie, he unzipped his coat to reveal a fully automated sniper rifle and four pistols. Due to having so many guns on him at the time, he could shoot an impractical amount of bullets at the rather rude and noisy aliens, leading to the complete decimation of his aggressors. After going on a killing spree for nearly 20 minutes, he remembered he was trying to watch a film and calmly sat down by himself. Everyone else already having left the film out of both fear and disgust due to the blood covering absolutely every service in sight. As the credits rolled, he stood up and gave an applause, and he felt that was well-deserved due to the film containing robot cars, explosions, and people hijacking various vehicles left, right, and center. An alien attempted to stand up and slash him with a katana, but in a fit of rage, John lifted the alien up and then promptly threw him through a wall in the movie theater with superhuman strength due to intense anger and th through the newfound entrance he, cr he craftily created, taking 3D glasses with him. <laughs> he still wears them to this day. He has found... He has recently found out that he was banned from every movie theater within a 30-kilometer radius of London. Hearing about his impressive deeds, XCOM invited John to aid them. He agreed under the condition that he was eligible to aid them, or sorry, eligible for an unlimited subscription to Netflix in exchange for his services. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so good. Oh boy, Heidi Cobra Hansen. All right, weapon color. What color is this? 13, is that what that is? Yeah, weapon color none, or sorry, weapon color 13, none. Very cool. All right. As a young, precocious child, Heidi was a budding athlete in winter sports, both in the ski slopes and on the ice. Unfortunately, a rare genetic condition slowly robbed her of her mobility, and despite consulting with several doctors, no known cure could be found. Left untreated, her condition worsened and was deemed terminal. After the aliens invaded and Advent took over the governance of the world, Heidi proved to be a responsive test subject at one of the Advent gene therapy clinics in Stockholm. Her parents had simply wanted to cure their terminally ill child. While she was given a second chance at life, it came with a heavy price. She was torn away from her family and taken to a secret facility in the jungles of the Amazon. There she was experimented on with alien DNA, causing permanent changes to her physiology. Heidi managed to escape and was fortunate to be taken in by a Brazilian's resistance cell who nursed her back to health. She now joins XCOM seeking revenge against the aliens who violated her. I love that when you guys cr create these characters and you put in stories about, like, what happened to them, there's a physical, like, something in their physical appearance that has manifested because of it. Like, the, she's got, like, the, um, the avatar hair. Like, that's really cool. Cobra, welcome to the team. And last but not least, Chris Merlin Broadway. Let's check out your situation first, all right? So, purple tundra. It's a 44 tundra. All right. Oh, yeah, you changed. 44 tundra. Okay, cool. Chris Merlin Broadway, tell us about yourself. Chris's journey began when traveling holiday with his adventure seeking further in the Amazon went awry. That's two in the Amazon. Fortunately, his father was an experienced explorer and Chris was quick to pick up the skills and talents of a nomadic life. Both survival and living off the land become second nature to him. When he was just 18, he found himself at the mercy of a group of cannibals in the vastly unexplored jungle and he and his dad had to fight their way to safety, using whatever they could in their environment to survive while being hunted. From creating toxins from plant life to medicinal salves, they survived and thrived for over a year in the expanses of the wilderness until finally rescue came. 
It was not until years later that he decided to leave the care of his father in search of adventures of his own. This led him to the military. He enlisted in the army, taking all of the training and excelling in mat in all sorry in a matters of army life. He spent most of the time sent out in defense of his country on pathfinding missions in various locations and environments, that, and this suited him perfectly. After a year or two of promotion and outstanding service record, his particular talents were noticed by outside powers and was approached with an offer he couldn't refuse. He soon became a member of an elite, task, an elite group, a task force led by John Bradford, a communications and tactics specialist that called themselves the Spectres, a primarily surveillance... Uh, is it like this? I don't even think I have that right. Something like that. A primarily surveillance and intelligence gathering group that worked for a secretive council which had the planet's best interests at heart. It was during this time Chris earned the nickname Merlin as he was often reported being seen mixing various herbs, plants, and other materials in the field to complement their situation. It was not long after that the first of the Xeno motherships was sighted and the council called on the group to act, forming a new organization known as XCOM and the rest is history. Sick! Alright guys. That's everybody. Look at the group. So good. So good. Oh, I'm so pumped, you guys. I'm so pumped. Also, check this out. At the top, tells us how many of each thing we have. How nice is that? Grenadiers, infantry, psionic, ranger, sharpshooter, specialist. Very nice. Also, uh, we can get into customizing the Sky Ranger. So, um, we probably should do that. Um, I like going with, like, a worn-out look, and then we could change... Some of the primary and secondary colors. I kind of like the idea of having like a bumblebee type of type of scenario. Um, like, look at this. Some of these are pretty disgusting, but some of them are also pretty cool. It uses all the camos from the guns. If I'm not mistaken, there might be more decals that I can find that have been like custom built. But the ability to just change this stuff makes me so happy. I'm gonna go... Wild. And we can put a little decal on the front. Or maybe this is the part. Maybe the decals is the only thing we can actually change. For access symbol. Oh, let's do the shark teeth. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> There's our Sky Ranger. Okay. T to the actual missions. There we go. Good timing. Alright. Get an engineer. Boom. Easy mission. Great. Escort resistance operative to the workstation. I think that's like a new mission right off the get-go, isn't it? I think so. In course for Sector 1, the Arctic. Cool. That's awesome. New, brand new mission type. Never seen this before. Should be fun. Look at- oh, look at that! That's so good. It's so good. Alright. I mean, I'm pretty sure that I'm just gonna take these four. If we can just get, like, if we can get a little bit of, like, you know, momentum, it's gonna feel pretty nice. Um... It's tempting, though. Like, maybe we should bring... Maybe we should bring one rookie out. I like the guaranteed damage with the psionic. I like the aim that we have with our sharpshooter. Um, and with you... With you, we can shoot twice. We have justice and we have grapple. Like, I kind of like that. I also think... maybe we, Should we put the repeater here? Or we want to put the repeater here. Maybe we put it here. I don't... I, I'm of two minds. Um, I may use the mod where we can, like, swap weapon upgrades and stuff around, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Do we want to build any med kits? Probably. I think if we do it, we'll go like this. Give her the med kit. And then... Yeah, I think this can work. 
I think this can work. I don't know. I might have a change of heart. We'll see if I end up... I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to take a break now, but I might swap in for a stronger soldier. But we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we'll leave it. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm really excited for this season. I already am super stoked on all of our soldiers. You guys did a phenomenal job. And the deadline, as, a, as I mentioned earlier, you can submit any time throughout the season. And I'll have all the information in the uh, description below on how to actually enter the character pool. I would love for more of you guys to be in here. If you have suggestions um, on other mods for this campaign, let me know, but I think we're pretty full up, so uh, we probably won't be making any changes. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode, okay? Take care. Bye.